Kita pakai toko tiko, na ini kami nasi sini manipulah. Kena macam kita ni manipulah si suka restore ni taki, ni nak bekai, ni nak bulida. The things that we're going to learn, the things that we're going to share uh, in the next few weeks. Please don't miss a session. There's a lot of stuff that we need to learn, that we need to go through. So please come prepared, come with a heart of uh, expectancy that God is going to do a new thing in your life. Amen. We're in a new season in God and God is doing a new thing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just open up with the word of God. In Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel of Rosalamu Karua. Verses 29 to verse 31. The Sarah Babiti Amen. One more time in the Tibo Bay for Marky. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 29 to verse 31 and it goes like this the people of the land have used oppressions committed robbery, mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. Amen? There's a lot of stuff going on in the land. <coughs> this is what the Lord said. So I sought for a man among who I would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Therefore I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. Notice the judgment came on the land because no one was interceding on behalf of the land. Amen? <coughs> Emeni, mara kini sana sana ngani ndua, e tu la ketiko, me masulaka, me bakona ketiko, eh, na banua, wana kelo. Praise the Lord. Judgment comes on the land, eh? Praise the Lord. This is an indictment on the church. Ngoa na takata kato me takaba na na songo songo leno, tasi ni takaba tiko na songo songo leno, tu na na takata. Today I'll be touching on on intercession and warfare, eh? Uh, Pastor Joe will be touching on leadership and continuous um, uh, leadership uh, training. Amen. Uh, we've got some man manual for you. Today, my dear, let me just show you some of the manual. Masayado mai. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are touching on intercession and warfare. Eh? I believe uh, the, the intercession and warfare we touched was about, how long ago was that, Tinella? It was about four years ago? Yeah, because I still got the video on okay? I was watching it the other day, and I looked, I looked at all John and Matthew and all these ladies. They look really young that day. But not, I'm not saying that because you're four years older now, yeah, but no, but that's not the reason why. So. Do you realize uh, uh, in the season that we're living in, the intercession and the warfare has gone to another level? Okay? There's a change of season, and there's a change of the anointing, and there's a change of, yeah, of the intensity of the, of, of the prayer level that God wants his children to fight and minister in. Praise the Lord. Can I introduce you can download this thing from the internet. Eh? Uh, I got this. Uh, I got this from the internet. This is a testimony um, of uh, this guy sharing this testimony. So, can I can I introduce this lesson by reading the testimony? It is a very short testimony. I just want to read it so you can understand why we're touching what we're touching. Eh? The Musawili kamatanga ni papala ni na beka etukuni alata ngati ko na natura ngongo. 
I want to share with you from a testimony of someone who was saved, someone who had been serving the devil. And when that man gave his testimony, it so challenged me. I did not want uh, to believe it. I had to go 10 days before the Lord in fasting, asking, asking him, Lord, is this true? And it was at that time that the Lord began to teach me what happened in the spiritual realm when we pray. You see, the title of this uh, testimony is How Satan Stalks Our Prayers. It's not in the notes, eh? Praise the Lord. This man was born after his parents dedicated themselves to Lucifer. So, orang utama kena tina orang ready siapa ni tak cuma orang we. This is what happens when he was still in the womb. They made so many rituals dedicating him to serve Lucifer. Ni sekarang kau ni kau ni tadi tinggal orang orang ni. Rosa tempur orang orang ni, they setan. Praise the Lord. When he was four years old, he began to exercise his spiritual power, and his parents began fearing him. When he was six years, his father surrendered him to the witches to go and be trained. So now you know how important the Sunday school training program is. Yeah? Praise the Lord, Sunday school teacher. Amen. Uh, what was that? Uh, when he was four years old, he began to exercise spiritual power and his parents fearing, uh, began fearing him. When he was six years, his father surrendered him to the witches to go and be trained. And by ten years, he was doing great things in the kingdom of the devil. He was feared by the normal witches. He was still a young boy when he was so terrible in the things he did. He grew up to be a young man in his twenties with so much bloodshed in his hands. Praise the Lord. Killed at will. No ka matapata pa vitali o kwa. Eh? E na kukuni terror. He had the ability to go out of his body through transcendental meditation. And he could levitate. Levitate means he could just, when he's meditating, his body would just lift up and float in the air like that. Sometimes his body would lift off the ground and stay in the air and sometimes he could go into a trance and come out of his body his body would remain behind and he would go out into the world this is called astro traveling yeah? praise God his body his body stays behind but his what shall we say his spirits and their own right? travels You understand now? This is what we, this is what the church has to deal with, eh? So I'm just reading his testimony out to you. And this guy was used by Satan to destroy so many churches, to break down so many churches, and to destroy so many pastors. Please pray for the pastors that look after you. Amen. One day he was assigned to destroy a church that was so full of prayer. Corporate prayer is very important. Yes, that's good that you pray in your own home. But when, when the church calls for prayer time, please come. Don't stay home, eh? Please come. There were so many divisions in this church and many confusions. So you know who's causing it. And he began to work on this church. But at the time, the pastor called a fast for the whole church. As the church began to fast, there was a lot of repentance and a lot of reconciliation. And the people came together and they began to pray for the work of the Lord in their midst. And they continued interceding and crying to God to have mercy and intervene in their lives. As and as the days went by, this man was coming again and again with demon spirits against his church. But there was a word of prophecy that came telling the Christians to rise up and to wage warfare against the powers of darkness that were attacking the church. 
So one day this man leaves his body in his room and goes astral traveling. He leads a mighty force of demonic spirits against this church. Now this is his testimony. His spirit was moving in the air over the church and trying to attack it. But there was a covering of light over the church. Here we go. This is where it gets interesting. And suddenly there was an army of angels that attacked them and there was fighting in the air and all the demons fled but he was arrested by these angels. <laughs> yes, arrested by the angels. He saw himself being held by about six angels and they brought him through the roof right before the church altar. There, there he was and the people were praying. They were deep in prayer and spiritual warfare, binding and breaking and casting out. The pastor was on the platform leading the prayers and the warfare. The spirit of the Lord spoke to the pastor. The yoke has been broken and the victim is there before you, helping through deliverance. As the pastor opened his eyes, he saw this young man collapse there. His body was with him. He was in his body. The young man says he does not know how his body joined him. He had left it in his house. But there he was in his body and he didn't know how he had entered in except the angel had carried him through the roof. Praise the Lord. Now this, these things are difficult to believe but the pastor silenced the church and told the church what the Lord had told him and asked the young man, who are you? The young man was trembling as the demons began coming out of him. So they prayed for deliverance and afterwards he began to share his life. This young man has now come to the Lord and is an evangelist preaching the gospel. He's being used by the Lord mightily in setting other people free by deliverance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pastor so man of one Lord. So tonight uh, we, we will be touching on the introduction of uh, of intercession. Eh? So there's a lot of lot, lot of notes to come, and but we will try to go through this. We'll see how far we go through tonight. Uh, we only have a few minutes to go, but anyway, so we'll see how we do. See how we do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Intercession. Intercession is the act of petitioning God or praying on behalf of another person or group. The sinful nature of this world separates human beings from God. It has always been necessary, therefore, for righteous individuals to go before God to seek reconciliation between Him and his fallen creation. Yeah? Bimbi me da kilati goe. Na nonda itutu, se na nonda na beka e kabibi kenda kene na kalo me da pedora e na buku ni nonda vaka vaka e huru huru ngo. Kene soma soma ni loko in the lewe na tiku. Praise the Lord. So you can see, you can hear, you can know from the testimonies that prayer plays a very important part in the life of the church. Yeah? A church that doesn't pray is the church that is very easily defeated. Praise the Lord. If anything that the devil is trying today is that to broke up the churches and to kill off the work of the Lord and the men and the women of God who are doing the work of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, if anybody wants to ask any question or doesn't understand anything, could you please just put your hand up and we'll go through it again. Praise the Lord. We have so many pastors here and lay preachers here. Praise the Lord. Tine Male is here. Pastor Thomas is here. Pastor Joe is here. Amen. Sister Nani is there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The number one, number one is confess your sins. Eh? 
Pagkali ka sa akin, talaga kami, talaga kung humanis sa talaga ko yan, kinano, talong itapo, long, ganyan mas-mas, kung kaya lang katawa, waktu sana, no, mo ipawa pala ta. Confession. Confess your sin. You begin with confession of your sin. My question to you is this, why is that? Na dawa, imbibig kina na waktu tusa. Imbera ninda teki mo na nanonda, Lapa pa na kaloy na mas. So, an intercession. Why is it important to confess your sin? Praise the Lord. Sin is a barrier, eh? Na yung wala pa na kwa yung way tatahan rumi. Kwa yung way na bakuwa iko, e na nung mula ko yan, e kina isero tambo ni kaloy. Praise the Lord. Sin is a barrier, eh? Sin stops you. Sin prevents you. Praise the Lord. Now, Pastor Joe has been teaching on justification and From that, you understand why we're saying this. Amen? Can we discuss that? You will see, in the Old Testament, the blood sacrifice only covered their sins. But in the New Testament, the blood of Jesus removes your sin. Amen? See, in the Old Testament, they use the word atonement. You'll never find the word atonement in the New Testament. Yeah? In the New Testament, they use the word remission. Hebrews 9.22 okay? Without the shedding of the blood there is no remission of sin not atonement of sin okay? So when Jesus sacrificed his blood okay? all that sin was removed totally removed Meron din po kaya katakan ng tebor, may tukun naman ko, sista ko, asipo, ibang ko na tayo kayo. No record ba tayo? Not in heaven, not anywhere else. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, sin is a barrier. Sin is a barrier. Praise God. You notice in confession, what happens, there must be an acknowledgement in the heart. There has to be an acknowledgement in the heart that in this relationship between you and God, between us and God, that God is the stronger partner in this relationship. He is strong and we are weak. Amen? There must be a recognition, there must be a realization in us that in this relationship between us and God, that God is the stronger partner in this relationship. Therefore, we cannot come to God any way we want to. Yeah? We must come to God with a heart of brokenness. Benny Hinn puts it this way, you must be under the blood to come into the presence. That is true. Eh? Now we notice this in the Old Testament. Uh, when when the, when the priest has to come and sacrifice something that uh, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah did, When they come, they have to sacrifice an animal just for the sin of the priest himself before they sacrifice for the whole nation. He has to sacrifice an animal just for himself before he does that for the whole nation when he takes it inside. If he doesn't, when the glory falls in the Holy of Holies, Because they, at the edge of the robe, there are bells hanging on it. Eh? So when he's doing the sacrifice in there, the people in, this, in, in the church, they will be hearing bells. When there's no more sound of the bells, what happens? The priest is dead. Because he, tried, he, he came into the Holy of Holies without any covering of blood. Amen? Amen. So you see now how you... You, so you see now how important it is for confession before we start it. Be in bici, boy. Me da boa tu sei que anda boa na calo. Me rau ele onde ela comai que na que na zero tamu de calo. Ona se não ela comai zero tamu de calo, que a se tipo na igual a malada no mundo, se não duca tipo na no mundo lá, é na igual a malada. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. And the scripture of it, other than the scripture, you want in Western scripture, pastor. The scripture is in Isaiah 59. Can we look at it? 
Isaiah 59, come to it, please. Do sa kita magitulo na doro. Marotig wala yung doya naman yata ni ko. Let's take him doon na turang na kami siya na. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 59. Are you there? Verse 1 and verse 2. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and verse 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ears are uh, ear heavy that it cannot hear, but, can I I think it's ear. Eh? But your what? Your iniquities have separated you from God. Eh? Separated you from God. Not separated God from you, but separated you. Can man balik pada atas soi ke? Okay lah, eh? Amen. Your sin removes you eh? from the presence of God, so that He will what? Not hear you. In in it has somehow become a custom. It has become a custom or tradition that confession. Confession is left until the end of prayer. Eh? It has become a custom or a tradition that confession is left at the end of the prayer. According to the scripture. According to this scripture. Eh? If, if we do that, is this prayer heard or not? Eh? When we leave confession right at the end, and then we say, "Ah, turangan ni pusat kita ni tu ibarat mana? Islam ni pusat kita, orang pasal surat kita." And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Nama suruh nama suruh kita sama semua kita ilu ya. Romo ni sesen. According to the scripture, no way, because it says here your sin, eh? Eh? Your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden His face from you. So that he will what? Not hear. Kena malam malam nak mangosa nak mata u kena di masuk nak kena tuan ni mai pak mata mai takia. Beri sejuk ni malam malam. Saya sangat sangat tunggu ni rumah orang keluar ini orang tak. Ah, naulo. Iya. Pasal aku berkuasa dalam suka ibu mata tak serci dengan gue, nak masuk ke atas kamar mana ilu ya? Kau yang seneng sarat cingan ibu mata nak keluar, seneng sarat ibu mata nak keluar. Baca nama masuk ya sentuh kami nak satu kan nombul lah, nombul pala pala tay, tahu sih kau mai buat nak keluar, mesen aku ini ibu mata nak nombul masuk, kau kasih seneng ibu mata tiba nak keluar nombul masuk ya, so mana keluar sih seneng? Seneng. Kasih mata ni ibu mata, mengenai so mana kata, nak keluar sih tu so mana masuk kasih ibu mata. Ah, saya bukan kerana kalau bukan apa cikgu, siapa? Saya nak. Yang kata saya nak apa? Saya nak zoomi. Ya. Yes, yes, that's that's true. It it would be good practice. It would be good practice, eh? Because unless you're so sure that between praying in the morning and praying in the in the evening here, in all these times during the day, you haven't committed any sin, then you have that legal right to go into the presence like that, eh? But if you're not sure that whether you've committed any sin between in the morning and in the evening, then it's much safer to say At least you're sure. At least you're sure now that God will hear it because you've confessed it, eh? But if you're unsure, Praise God. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, that's a very good question. Yeah. Pastor Joji, do you want to say something? Yeah. Yes, so, that is a very good question. So, in other words, the Bible says here, it's good practice, yeah, before you go to God in prayer. What do you say? Because it's good practice before you go to God in prayer. What do you say? Because sometimes, you can't do it, 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 you can't do it. Eh, sah tata, eh, sah tata mana tata lagi rawa-rawa. Nobody is perfect here, eh. Wilda lagi nak bawa bos dengan tu. 
Como saya ngambil waktu si Iwan Abi Phoenix? Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Kita kira deh, nanti mau temen belum di warna kelur. Si Iwan Abi kena sakit tak eh? So in confession, what happens in confession? You have come to a place in your attitude of heart. Eh? You've come to a place in your attitude of heart eh? where you have admitted eh? and acknowledged eh? that you are a sinner and you need to repent of your sins. This is what confession. Na tamata ko sin do be a bahatu tusa, na tamata ko sin be admit taka, eh ni tamata mo mo, na tamata mo na tamata ya loko ko. And we found a scripture the other day with Tine Male in Obadiah 1.3 that the pride of your heart has deceived you. Your love. <laughs> now, everybody understand that, eh? She's saying that this, this, she went through a teaching last Monday that uh, that uh, there's no need for us to confess our sins because the Lord Jesus Christ has taken them all away. If that is true, then we won't have one John one nine. Eh? Yeah. One John one nine. Catch the bangor. Mateni chun indu diwa. Eh? If what? If we con what? If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to to what? To forgive us. Eh? I think. Nakatu nchu kwa ndawe, enangoni sana na tondo hae, sasi nyang tala kini menda mbaka tu sana nante kwa ndawe, kewa kaya ndara sege pala ni takawa, ndo tala ibala mbaka, maina ngole ta dringo bi chisu kina, miyana ta turang nante kwa mbulo. If you, if, if you have the ability in you not to commit any other sin, eh, at, at the moment, or after the moment you receive the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior and Lord, then you don't have to commit, then you don't have to confess anything, because you haven't committed any sin. The only problem now with us. No. We commit sin today, tomorrow, the next day, and keep on doing it, eh? because we're still living in this flesh. The only time you don't have to confess is when you're living in your glorified body. And I, when I'm looking around here, I don't see anybody in their glorified body yet. So you still have to confess your sin, eh? All of us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Why are you now, eh? Yeah. And I don't know what to say on the Bible, but I want to give you an attention in the way. Yeah, take a look. Praise the Lord. Don't I have any more questions? Praise the Lord. I don't know what to say. The scriptures are there. Psalm 68, 66, verse 18. Eh? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will what? He will not hear. Eh? Isaiah 59, 2, we've read that. Micah 4, 3, uh, 3, 4, sorry. Eh? The Lord will what? He will not hear. You know, you see, God said, He will even hide His face. Man, you And one John one nine, eh? If we confess our sins, praise the Lord. Yeah. So now, can I ask the question? What are some of the consequences of unconfessed sin? But the consequences of unconfessed sin? But it's like this. We see in one John one nine, it says there, if we confess. So you have the choice, eh? Because it's got the if. If. In other words, God will only forgive the sins that you confess. What about the sin you like to marrow and just keep it for another day? What happens to that sin? Because God is working on an honest basis system. Eh? Only the sins that you confess, only the sin is forgiven. The sin that you don't confess, what happens to it? It's not, it, it's not forgiven. So it, that's why it's necessary for you to confess, identify yourself. As eh? a general prayer, in, in other words, if you have spoken harshly to somebody at work, and you've been convicted by the Holy Spirit to go and apologize, you can't avoid that. Eh? You must go and apologize. On the syndrome, you must say, oh Lord, I'll forgive them quiet. I'll forgive them quiet. No, no, you have to actually have to physically go and ask for forgiveness. Satoru Lawa. Praise the Lord. Especially when you've been prompted by the Holy Spirit. Eh? Amen. I should have many. Praise the Lord. Eh? 
Amen. Amen. My time is very getting very close. Okay. So let's have a look at some of the some of the consequences of un, unconfessed sin. Eh? Now that when we are in the sana ni be pa tu sana on the Bible. Praise the Lord. Lagama da my Psalms 32. This is the consequences. This is the result when the children of God eh, fail, forget, or it just intentionally don't want to confess their sin. Psalms 32, eh? Verses 1. And then we go to verse 5. Sakuni. Psalms 32, verse 1 and verse 5. Now you realize this is not in the notes, eh? I was at Tuguna Tsingani, the day came down the Lord, praise the Lord. Verse 1, it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. So you straight away you notice here that there's a blessing that comes to the person who is honest before God and confesses their sin. Praise the Lord. There is a blessing. And when we back to the Lord, we can see that we have to do the same thing, we have to do the same thing, and we have to do the same thing, and we have to do the same thing. We have to do the same thing in being forgiven. Kuni tawra chiko ba mamanda na nona pisa na kina kalo na nona mumbula. Don't treat it casually. The forgiveness or the redemption of God eh, that you are enjoying now. One thing that I was also say here, you'll notice if there's something not right in your life, you notice the peace of God is shaken. Have you noticed that? Eh? It is shaken. You, you, there's no rest in you. You know, uh, myself, I, this thing goes with that. And I know. I've done something, I said something, I, my behavior somewhere. There's something I'm not, not, my relationship with God is not right where it should be. When the, when the peace of God is shaken in your life, you know something is not right. That's the time. Eh? That's why the Bible says, let the peace of God be the empire of your heart. Praise the Lord. Okay, to see you. Uh, whose sin is covered? Now the reason why it's got covered here because this is Old Testament, eh? Because this is Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Some of the Do I have to somebody wants to add to it or elaborate someone what we're touching here? Go to verse 5. Same chapter, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Amen. Eh? Now what to do, sir? Now what to do, sir? Praise the Lord. All right. Come to Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Come to Psalm 31. And uh, I want to go to verse 10. Are you at verse 10? For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. All my strength fails because of what? Notice that. All your strength. All my strength fails because of what? Because of your iniquity. Eh? Amen. Maybe, maybe this is one of the reasons of eh? Not many things being done. Wale wale to tolo, malu malu mu to tolo. Sembari ngono mau bayi tito kokino sa, bayi tito kokoso. Praise the Lord. Sembari ngono mau sa mati kina, mau sa mati koso. Why? Unconfessing. Unconfessing is the result of premature death. Amen. And my bones waste away. Bone cancer, bad tooth. Well, bad tooth, maybe you don't brush your teeth, but sin. Buddha tiko na nungusui. I think in the in the Fijian Bible, it's saying, Buddha na nungusui. Buddha na nungusui. So, unconfessed sin. Waka buna tiki na me, Buddha na nungusui. Praise the Lord. Sabi yung matatay sa nakaa? 
Okay. In, uh, in, in, in Psalms 32 verse 3, eh? let's come back to Psalms 32 verse 3, it says the same thing. Eh? It says, when I kept what? When I kept silent, eh? my bones what? Grew old. When I kept silent. You can see the to sign on with Balabala. No, 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 yeah, in the eyes of God, who's right and who's wrong doesn't matter. Don't try to justify yourself. Eh? The moment you try to justify yourself, that's the moment God stops fighting your battle. Amen. Amen. Eh? So when I kept silent, my bones grew old. So when I kept silent, my bones grew old. Praise the Lord. What is that one? Send me back to that. We should have done this long time ago, but we didn't do it long time ago. We kept it, we kept it in the Marwe, Marwe, Marwe. So So I quote a take it to the grave. Eh? And I want to confess it, I want to say sorry. So they take their sin to the grave. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Come to Proverbs chapter 28. You don't mind me telling all these scriptures and looking it up and I hope you brought your finger, Bible finger turning pages in. Proverbs chapter 28. We're just doing the introduction today. Hopefully this has uh, helped you in some way. Proverbs 28 verse 13, please. Next week, please bring your notebook, bring your manual. 28, Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, He who covers his sins will not prosper. Will not prosper. This word prosper means in every area of your life or living. Instead of tumbo the keke, it just flat. Praise the Lord. Eh? Nisa kusti ni chuma na But whoever confesses and what forsakes them will have mercy. Amen. Eh? Mercy is better than judgment. Eh? Amen. Could you read the good news, please, uh, sister? You will never succeed in life if you try to hide your sins. Mm. Confess them and give them up, and God will show mercy to you. Eh? Confess and give them up. Give them up. Forsake it, eh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Any questions so far? So you need to come away from it. Need to. You need to go back. Yes. So I don't know about the style of Yes. 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 Amen. Do we talk to do we kind of No, I see. Do you need to be about Shalom. No. Okay. Stanisi. This book? Uh, no, here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because sin is the block of the anointing as well. Block the anointing. The block of the anointing. Bounce it. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But the question is, I'm not going to be able to do it. So, I'm not going to be able to do it. 
Nous avons dit que 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 nous avons dit This is just a prayer format. Eh? You can use it. If you've got a better one than this, fine, you can use that. Eh? The second last page, you can use that. Eh? So there are some extras in there. Uh, we can all of us are here. It's always uh, good to be quick in forgiving. The moment you know you've committed something, done something wrong, there and there, God, I'm sorry, I've done it. Forgive me. Because you'll be free all the time to move on with the work of God. Otherwise, keep me, keeping it inside of you, it's a blockage, yeah? But to always be quick and forgive, whatever it's done to do. Whether you're right or you're wrong, do it then, the moment. And it comes. Otherwise, you'll just miss your heaven. Mm. Amen? That's all I want to share today. Yeah. Thank you. I think we've already touched that because in forgiveness, there is a blessing that is released on your life straight away. And don't be back long, close me take any clue. E sumbuta na no mumbula ni no no ba tu saki na no mui bola bola ba wala kalo praise the Lord eh so kena mo ba le whoever is right whoever is wrong is not really doesn't really matter chini bi bi ole ndo mo de ala eh na kan bi bi na me dan do mo chini nga ba no ma tani kalo that's the main thing eh our relationship with God is the is the most important thing in our life eh? and should be it should be the most important thing in our life we should treasure that with everything eh we should guard it with everything that we can. Praise the Lord, eh? Kwa mbaka po kakati gina na Proverbs chapter 4, 23-24, eh? Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the what? The issues of life or the wellspring of life. Kwa ya, eh? Mungkaro na binang sara, eh? Mungkaro na binang sara, eh? Mungkaro na binang lungu, eh? Nisa na dhab. Praise the Lord. Kwa ya, eh? Mungkaro na binang. Ni tuwa na tuna lungu, you cannot receive anything from the Lord. You'll notice that, eh? Ini tuwa tak kunelo, ini tuwa tak kunelo. Senior lah masalahnya, di mana masih berada pagi tadi mana kan? Kalau dia memang kau sama, sama wali tu masa sama wali sancinga. Ia sama sama wali sancinga. You can be miming the song, but there's no there's no heart engagement because God is God of the heart. Nak kalau pun nak kalau ni alo, wajar kalau lu tuwa yang dulu merah lu tuwa dah lo. Absolutely. If there's no heart engagement with God. That day, you haven't connected with God. You haven't connected with God. To receive anything from God, there must be a heart exchange with God. Has to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you have a lot of questions. We can talk about it next week. Yeah, we can talk about it next week, and uh, so. Um, uh, we'll have a little bit of a break and then Pastor Joe will continue the next session. Amen. I'm giving plenty of time for him, eh? So he can he can come for both of us. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your people. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for opening and enlightening our eyes of understanding. Thank you for the enlargement of your heart, of our heart, Father God, that is taking place through what uh, we are learning uh, this afternoon. So we pray, Lord God, that you will help us to grow. You will help us to forgive. You will help us to confess. You will help us, Father God, to do what is necessary, Father God, so that we can maintain our relationship with you. We pray, help us, God. Any hidden sins, any sins in our lives, Father God, that uh, we fail to confess before you right now, Father God, throughout this auditorium, we just confess to you all of our sins, Father God. Every sin that we have committed so far, God, we confess it all to you. We pray, Lord God, that you remind us of any other sins that we need to confess. Lord God, we pray for your forgiveness. We pray for your grace and mercy. We pray, Father God, that you wash us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. We receive it by faith and we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We'll have a few minutes break and then uh, Pastor Joe will uh, take the next session. Amen. Bye.